Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mole Hill Mountain, episode 105. Andrew Eisen here, along with E, Zachary Knight. Hello, Zachary. Hello, Andrew. Hello, everybody out there. <laughs> so, uh, Zachary has not finished or even started Luke Cage, which I just finished this afternoon, so uh, we'll have to review that later. Yeah, but um do it this week and actually be able to, to finish it, so... I will say I really enjoyed it, and it may, I'd have to think about it a bit, but it may just have beaten out uh, season two of Jessica Jones as my favorite of the uh, Marvel right. Netflix shows. Um, no, also, uh, interestingly, uh, N Netflix has been very bastardly to me this week, um, and it, it's been difficult to actually watch anything because Netflix just stops in the middle of the show and then won't restart for a while. It's been very stubborn. Uh, so it's taken me all week. Normally I'll binge the entire 13 thing in like a three day weekend. Uh, nope. Nope. I, I've been watching it just all week. And I've been thinking, wow, Luke Cage is the best paced of the Marvel shows. And I always complain that they're too long at 13 episodes because they yeah. all feel like they're nine or 10 episode shows that are stretched out to an arbitrary length of 13 episodes. This one actually, I, I did feel the first episode dragged a bit and the finale takes its time. Um, not so much dragging, but it does yeah. between episode 11 and 12. There's a little bit of a time jump. That I was like, uh, wait, it, it is this like two weeks later or something? Um, <clears throat> but uh, other than that, it's it's paced really well, and I wonder if it's because I spread this show out over a week, <laughs> <laughs> so the so any pacing problems weren't as apparent had I watched it over two or three days. Uh, Possibly, I'm not sure. Yeah. But I really like where uh, where everyone ends up. It this one definitely has me the most interested to see a season three uh, or to see the the subsequent season um all right and matt matthew's a couple minutes behind but uh yeah I, I, he's saying well you watched it over a week and <laughs> do, you, do you think that might be why it feels better it might be uh maybe maybe i should stop binging them over a weekend and they won't and they won't feel so <laughs> uh poorly paced but yeah. um or unnecessarily long uh but oh my heavens some of the best performances in this one um alfrey woodard and uh uh the late uh, uh reggie kathy um just knock it out of the park performances from those two holy biscuits um uh, and, uh, I don't think I'm really spoiling anything by saying that Danny Rand pops up and, um, he's, yeah. he, he's tolerable. So <laughs> good job showrunners. Uh, he, he's, what's interesting is he's, he's very Zen and mellow um, yeah. now. And he, he also has a line. He's like, oh man, you sound like I used to, and that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nice. um, so I think so. I'm a little bit more hopeful about a second season of Iron yeah. Fist. Uh, the actor whose name I can never remember, who plays a uh, um, Danny Rand, uh, still he's not a martial artist, and it shows. He, yeah. He's he's doing the best he can, and he's doing fine it's just clear that this is not a person who's spent his entire life doing martial arts yeah. uh, which is kind of a shame when th that's the whole point of the character you know um Kristen ritter and uh mike coulter uh, their characters are just brawlers they're super strong nigh impervious they throw punches because they don't have to learn how to fight they're yeah. they, they just throw a <laughs> they, and uh, Matt Murdock is constantly in a mask, so he can have a stunt double. <laughs> but but I, <laughs> Finn Jones, thank you, Chaos. Finn yeah. Jones. I can't. Sounds, and, sounds you know, like I knew it was Finn. I was wanting to say Finn Wolfhard, but that's the kid from uh, It and Stranger Things. Yeah, but it sounds like they need to uh, 
to put Danny Rand in his comics costume and give him the mask so that they can cast a stunt double. You know, and it's like, it's a good point. It's like, you know, Iron <laughs> Fist does have a mask, but uh, uh, the, the one team up episode was fun. Uh, the, the two still, uh, Mike Coulter and Finn Jones do have chemistry, which you yeah. saw on Defenders, <clears throat> even though Danny Rand, this version of him is a putz. Um, <laughs> But he's less putzy now, and I guess they could only get him for one episode because he's in like episode nine or ten or something like. And the, and the next episode rolls around, and you're like, um, "Oh, I, I guess Danny just went home." <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like, "Yeah, just passing through." Hi, bye. <laughs> that was a little awkward. Um, Not- that was awkward. There are a few really on the nose, almost meta moments, mm-hmm. uh, like. Where Luke Cage, uh, Misty Knight says, uh, he says, I don't need a sidekick. And Misty's like, who says I'm your sidekick? And he (laughs) damn near looks into the camera and he's like, well, it's my show. It's like, ah, ah. <laughs> they do things like that a, a couple yeah. of times. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, like, ah, it's a little on the nose, but that's all right. It's yeah. comic book. We're here to have fun. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Um, and, but, uh, but Zachary hasn't seen it, so we won't talk. So yeah. And- but I, I have actually watched some TV this week, and uh, I, I wanted to, to talk about this. I, I had started re watching Batman the Animated Series, like, mm-hmm. uh, and and uh, I am really enjoying this. And, and I think for it's me, yeah, it is a great show. It's it's very well written, and there's some really good stories going on in it. Um, you know, Paul Dini is does a great job with his writing work in this. Um, but uh, I, as I was watching this, um, you know, I, I I've most recently watched like uh, you know, and this is like in the last few years, I watched the uh, Beware the Batman, which was that three D animated Batman, and uh, oh yeah. And then, uh, and also the Batman, which was the um, yeah, not the not very good one, um, but uh, those ones, uh, their first season focused a lot on the early years of Batman's career and you know finding his footing and everything. But uh, and and I was and it's been forever since I watched Batman the animated series, but. Uh, and so I was kind of expecting something similar going in because it's like I said, it's been forever. But no, this this series jumps right into like Batman's been on the streets for years working. You know, the Joker is a known a known uh, figure. Um, let's see. It's like most of the villains that, that he goes up against are pretty much known figures in the thing. It's like there's a uh, the first season has. Yeah. It has an origin story for Two Face, Clayface, and Man Bat. Yeah, Man Bat. But Man Bat's like the first episode. The first episode, yeah. Yeah, and um, and then Poison Ivy, I believe, was a an origin story. But Penguin, Joker, and a few other ones were uh, like Killer Croc. They were all known quantities. They yeah. were there. They I'm trying to think of. It. Mr. Freeze. I, I think his origin well, it, was in the movie. Yeah, his. Uh, it was, but yeah, his two-part episode was his first appearance in Gotham. So it was mm-hmm. kind of a, a. But he was already Mr. Freeze, right? He, he was already Mr. Freeze, but yeah. he. It was just the first time anybody ever met him, yeah. and so so I think you know that's. I find that that is where this show's strength lies because I'm watching, I'm also watching the, the new Spider-Man cartoon show on, on Disney. And, and this one's just, Oh, it, it's terrible. I hate watching it, but I still watch it anyways, but uh, it's, it's all Spider-Man new and, uh, you know, learning. And then it's like, they, then they dump like, 50 other spider people into the show as well. Um, but yeah, but it's like every other, every single other Spider-Man show I've watched is all Spider-Man's first time being Spider-Man. And, and, uh, and I, I really don't 
like that. You know, it's especially with a character that we've had around for years. It's like just jump into you know Spider Man in college. That's one of the things I liked about uh, that uh, the MTV Spider Man with uh, Neil Patrick Harris voicing him. Um, that that one it was Spider Man and you know a college age Spider Man. He's been Spider Man for a while, and and this is, uh, yeah, and and so it was a lot better series for it, I thought. But uh, um, but yeah, so uh, animated series, the Batman the animated series is definitely one of the best, and uh, I'm looking forward to watching uh, the Superman one too, eventually. I still want to watch Brave and the Bold because I never got around to watching it. I hear it. Oh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I, I like uh, Aquaman in Brave and the Bold is my favorite character. And it, it, he's just, every every appearance with Aquaman is hilarious. It's it's outrageous! And is is he that said an that, Aquaman catchphrase, I take it? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, one of the best lines in that is uh, um, uh, Aquaman, and I, th- I think it's Batman, or it might have been the Atom that he was with, but they were shrunk down, and uh, and they were trying to figure out how to get through this this yard they were in. And, and so Aquaman just, like, uses his, his fish telepathy, and, uh, and then a bunch of silverfish come out of the, out of the out of the ground to uh, hmm. <laughs> to to help him out, and and the uh, the guy that's with Aquaman is like, um, those aren't fish, or those are silverfish, those are bugs. And Aquaman's like, a fish is a fish. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I nice. love it. It's like so. I take it you can control <laughs> seahorses. Yeah. Can you control real hor- regular horses? <laughs> I don't like know. A, a horse is not a fish, yeah, but a seahorse is. So mm-hmm. hey, yeah, lots of good stuff in in Brave and the Bold, and and yeah, and it's like they're they're all one off sketches, but they do have um, they do have a like a, uh, a like an overarching back plot that's going on in, in some of it, and which uh, culminates into a into a multi part episode, which was really good. So. Cool. Yeah, well, yeah. If you get the chance. You should definitely watch it. I'm not sure where you can find uh, Brave and the Bold right now, though. I don't know. Is it on Netflix? I haven't looked. I don't know. I I think I think I started watching it on Netflix, but they like only had like the first one or two seasons and or they didn't have the last season or something like that. I still need to I I guess I'm gonna have to go to Redbox or something and get Purge 2 and 3 because I never saw those and I'd like to see the fourth one which opens next week. Of course also uh, Ant-Man and Wasp opens next week and I want to see that too so Mm. yeah definitely Yeah. oh I I saw Jurassic Park or Jurassic Park Five. Jurassic World 2, yes. Jurassic Park Jurassic 5. Park, Jurassic Park 5, Jurassic World 2, Fallen Kingdom 1. Uh, <laughs> very cumbersome title. And, yeah. uh, I would say it's the best sequel of the bunch. That's not saying much. <laughs> um, and nice. I, I, I feel like I... Um, Are you considering Jurassic World a sequel in this? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to double check because, yeah, it is a sequel, but a lot of people consider it a reboot it's, more it's than a sequel. A, it's like yeah. not at all a reboot. It's definitely a sequel. Yeah. Although I, I feel somewhat of a kinship with um, the, the latest Jurassic Park because it, like so many, seemed to have completely forgotten about Jurassic Park 2 and 3. <laughs> Cause, Which is good, <laughs> because yeah, those are terrible. Probably so, because they're not good. Um, yeah. uh, Matthew says, Purge is weird as a franchise started as a very budget movie. Yeah, I saw the first Purge in the theater, well, at the drive-in, and I didn't really care for it. I thought it, I saw it because it had this really cool premise, and then it was, the premise wasn't utilized at all. It's just a, a home invasion movie, and not a very good one. <clears throat> but two and three look pretty cool. So, um, I, you know, just just a, a, a side thought. You know, it's like it, with the purge, it's like you know, crime is uh, is is legal, but 
you know, it's like, but so is self-defense. You know, if somebody's invading your house, you know, just have a shotgun on hand and blow their heads off while they're standing in your yard. You know, landmines. <laughs> landmines. Well, I mean, if you have, uh, yeah, you know, the the kind of the point that they seem to be getting in later in the series is, yeah, you know, if you are privileged to be in the position where you have a house with a yard with landmines and a shotgun, you're probably going to be fine. But if you're a poor person or a homeless person, you are very, very vulnerable. Yeah. That's kind of the meta point of these is the purge is an excuse, a smokescreen, a fig leaf to uh, legally attack the most vulnerable among us. Yeah. Um, at least that's that's the they touch on that very slightly in the first one, but it seems to be more explicit in the sequels, and that excites me. So yeah. I would really like to see them, but uh, they're not on Netflix. Maybe I'll have to again. I'll try and find them in a red box or something. Uh, but anyway, what was it talking about? Jurassic Park Five, right? Um, so the premise of Jurassic Park Five is uh, um, Isla Nublar the Jurassic Park Island, where Jurassic Park is, yeah. uh, and where they subsequently built Jurassic World, um, is a volcano. Yeah. And now it's erupting. And it's erupting hard enough that it's going to wipe out all of the dinosaurs on the island. Which I'm like, really? Is that? Oh, okay, I'm, I'm fine with that. The ex volcano explodes. It's like, boy, you guys really didn't think this one through. But, you know, people in Hawaii live on a volcano. So yeah. I guess it's not too you know, surprising. And, uh, I, I wonder what the... Um... <clears throat> what the uh, um what what that did to the atmosphere like blotting out the sun because yeah you, well, you know the the icelandic volcano throws out enough ash to to ground flights all through europe for for a week you know it's like what what would a volcano the size of isla nublar do when it explodes and all the subsequent ash going up in the atmosphere well even watching the movie as violent as that volcano eruption is i'm like that would a lot of the dinosaurs would be fine. I mean, it does. I mean, it's not like Pompeii. It's not going to. It's not hard enough to vaporize everything. It, it's not. A, it doesn't appear to be like it's going to fill the sky with ash, such that it's going to block the sun, kill all the plants, all the herbivores will die, and then all the carnivores will die because they have nothing to eat. It seems like it's just spewing lava and hot rock all over the place and it's going to take out a bunch of the dinosaurs but most of them will walk away from the flow of lava um, yeah. but let's pretend that it, you know it's it's very localized eruption that's just going to wipe out life on the island or it's going to sink into the ocean let's say that. fine fine i can buy that so the premise of the movie is we made those dinosaurs. They are our responsibility. We have to go save them, save the dinosaurs, because we <laughs> they we can't make them go extinct again. That would be that would be very crappy of us. And I'm sitting in the audience. I'm like, did you not see the second and third movie? There's an entire <clears throat> other island full of dinosaurs. Isla Sornar, Sorna, yeah, Site B. Whole herds living happily, reproducing and multiplying. Now, I imagine there's probably a book or some wiki or <laughs> like like the promotional <laughs> website for the film actually fills in that plot hole and says, oh, there was a volcano on that island too. Or disease happened and they all died. Or in their great wisdom, they decided to bring all of the dinosaurs onto the same island. And they make so many bad decisions, I, I, I guess, yeah, that's just another one they would make. But it yeah. seems really, unless I missed a throwaway line in the movie somewhere, it seems <laughs> like this movie completely forgot that there's an entire second island filled with dinosaurs. If you can ignore that, it's a movie <laughs> with dinosaurs in it. So yeah. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. The, the biggest problem I have with uh, the, the uh, Jurassic World and Jurassic world too are i don't care about any of the characters i don't dislike any of the characters i mean owen and claire yeah. and whoever else the other people are are fine i just but i don't really 
care much. They're, they're not people like, you know, you watch the Star Wars movies or the Marvel movie, the, the superhero movies, and you like yeah. most all the characters. You're like, I want to hang out with these people. I want to come back in the sequel and see what other adventures they get to. The fun things is just watching these people hang out. Yeah. I do not care to watch Owen and Claire hang out. I do not <laughs> care at all. Just run from dinosaurs, you know? Yeah. Um, and that makes it a weaker movie in my estimation. But... I will say that this movie, Jurassic Park 5, is far and away, I I'm talking like miles, the most gorgeously shot film in the entire uh, uh, franchise. This thing is okay. just painterly. I mean, there are so many frames of this movie, that uh, uh, stills from this movie, that I would frame and hang on my wall. Excellent cinematography. Just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. But... Um, uh, born distracted. Why do they have to have dumb kids in these Jurassic movies? I don't know. They have uh, kids in all the of kids. them. Yeah, yeah, they they do. It's, I don't know why. Yeah, little kids don't like kids. They like adults and dinosaurs. Yeah, uh, I don't, they, I'm not sure why producers never get that. Is little kids don't care about little kids because they want <laughs> the kids want to be adults. They want to grow yeah. up. You know. They, yeah. they don't need the kid insert characters. Kids think the kids are lame too, mostly. <laughs> um, At least the Jurassic Park kids are lame. Yeah, I mean, when I was a kid, I wanted to be Winston Zedmore and Peter Venkman and Ray Stance and Egon Spangler. I wanted to be the ghost. I don't want to be a stupid kid. Yeah, because when you're a kid, you can't be a Ghostbuster because you're too young to have a job. You probably couldn't lift the damn proton pack. But then in the later seasons of the real Ghostbusters, they did like Slimer and the real Ghostbusters, and they had these like three rug rats down the street that hung out with Slimer and were like the junior Ghostbusters. And it's like, uh, just get to the real Ghostbusters. Just, and they, yeah, uh, I don't remember terrible. that. I mean, well, I, I, I do remember when it when it became Slimer and the real Ghostbusters, yeah. but I don't remember the yeah. the. Kids. A lot of people don't, and it, don't they know. they because that's when the show started failing, and they're like, "Oh, I guess Ghostbusters has run its course." No, you ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah. this uh, the kid in this movie is fine. She she's fine. Yeah. Although the plot twist I saw coming a mile away because I've seen movies before. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I didn't think, and unfortunately I'm like, Ooh, are they going to go there? It's, it's like here. I'm like, Ooh, are they going to go here? And they're like, nah, here's fine. I'm like, really? <laughs> it's, it's, it's all you're going to do. It's yeah. just that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, I know what you're talking about. Cause I've, I've read a, a few reviews, a uh, spoiler filled reviews and, and they, they talk oh, about okay. that. Yeah. And, uh, and, and everybody is just like, you know, it's everybody I've read you know about who, who've seen this, that they're, they're just like, Ooh, they're going to go here. Like you said, you know, and, uh, and it's like, Nope, we're just going to stop right here. And, and, there's, there's... and it's like, and, and everybody is just, every, you know, and there, there's audible. It's like, what <laughs> in the audience because everybody was expecting here yeah, yeah. and it's weird too because one that would have been cool but what they do with it is almost nothing there it, it they do so little with it there's almost no point yeah i mean other than her final choice that she makes in the, in the film at the very very end um the plot twist is the explanation for her final choice which makes sense yeah but it's like really all that for that eh. but again the movie has dinosaurs in it so i'm willing to cut it a lot of slack because <laughs> i like dinosaurs yeah but anyway let us move to our first topic which is really really weird um now this is a an article i read at ars technica and this I may get parts of this wrong because I only read this one article and maybe I'm just misunderstanding it. So chime in yeah. if you think I'm, I'm, I'm mistelling or misrepresenting this story. But this is kind of wacky to me. So there is a uh, team of people called Team Executor, which is spelled X-E-C-U-T-O-R, which is <laughs> cute. Um, anyway, so Team Executor is making a custom firmware for the Switch. Now, there are two versions of this custom firmware, a free version 
and a paid version. Now, the free version just allows you to play homebrew software, but the paid version that allows you to uh, pirate games or load a backed up copy of a game that I'm sure you already own. Yeah. Um, okay, so they have a free version, which is just homebrew stuff, and a paid version, which allows you to pirate stuff. Okay. The company who wants you to pay them to enable piracy on your Switch put anti-piracy measures in their piracy software so that you don't pirate the piracy software that they made so that you can pirate software. You see, because they want you to. That's they want basically you what to it sounds that, like. Yeah. Right. Right. They're like, you can pirate stuff, just not our stuff. So we put anti piracy <laughs> protection in our thing that enables piracy. This gets funnier. So there's another team called Team Reswitched who work with a dude named Mike Heskin, who's a vulnerability researcher. And he found. Um, that the anti-piracy he found the anti-piracy measure in team executors uh paid version yeah. which apparently goes a bit of a way to brick your damn system but that's not the funny part the funny part is according to him uh the executor uh, firmware actually used a uh, part of team reswitched uh firmware code from from their uh, from their open source firmware, <laughs> which is which violates their open source license. So, <laughs> if I'm reading this right, Team Executor stole code from another open source firmware to make it uh, to put anti piracy protections in their software that allows <laughs> you to pirate software. Oh man, this is hilarious. Good lord. <laughs> and I, I, now there's probably more dialogue on this, but as far as Ars Technica goes, the statement they got from Team Executor only denies that there were any attempts to maliciously damage the console of users that try to pirate its product. They're not commenting on anything else like stealing code to uh, from the from the from their competitors. Just like, oh no, that won't break your system. It's like that's <laughs> <laughs> That's not really the part I was expecting you to comment on there, guys. But uh... well, of course, they don't want to comment on the on the the really bad part because you know <laughs> open source code. Yeah, that that's you know what it, it's a good thing. You know, there's a lot of great uh, great products out there that are open source, and yeah. uh, and and it's it's a good thing to be able to build upon those things if you're interested in. But yeah, but. Uh, you know, open source people they take their uh, their their licenses very seriously, and um, and if you're if you're taking somebody else's code, using it in your product project without honoring that open source code, yeah, you're going to take a lot of people off, and uh, and some of these uh, you know some some of these projects, you know, I I don't know how how well these uh, SXOS. Uh, you know, it, group is is managed, but some of these they they get help from uh, organizations like the Apache Group, which mm -hmm. uh, does it, which is uh, manages the Apache license and uh, and everything, and and they will they will sue you if you're if you you know you're you're doing something really terrible with their license, and which it sounds like these uh, executor guys are doing is um, you know they're. Stealing open source code. Yeah, they're taking to the keep code you and... from stealing their product, which allows yeah. you to steal other people's product. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's a, it, it is. Yeah, it, it's it's terrible, and and it's a really dumb decision too, because uh, you know, and I I think uh, you know, uh, addicted to chaos says I hope they get sued into oblivion. Um, Oblivion. I, I don't think this is going to go into lawsuit territory no. because uh, the last thing um, these kind of these kind of groups want, especially if they're um, creating custom firmware that would opens up piracy for for video game consoles, the last thing they want to do is uh, go to court because that's going to get the attention of Nintendo, yeah. and uh, and and they don't want they don't want that to happen. But what will happen is that. Um, 
you know, uh, SX OS is going to cut uh, executor out. Um, and, uh, and, and, uh, and a lot of people are just going to not do anything with executors code. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> just, just it, this one's so ridiculous. I'm sorry. It I, is it, ridiculous. It's, yeah. I keep laughing. At it <laughs> How do, do we we stole someone's code to keep you from stealing our product, which will allow you to steal someone else's? <laughs> ah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, I could laugh about about that all night. Let, let's. Yeah, on. we could. Um, so, uh, according to uh, I saw on Bloomberg that uh, PUBG uh, <laughs> has dropped its lawsuit against uh, Fortnite. Um. I don't really have much to add to that, uh, except because uh, there were no one's really going on. At least according to Bloomberg, they don't have any quotes or anything. It's just this happened. But w what I had been picking up in various other uh, articles that were referencing this is that part of the complaint from uh, f uh, from PUBG was they worked with Epic, who makes both Fortnite and the engine that PUBG runs on. Yeah. Uh, so part of the complaint seemed to be, and I wasn't really clear on this the first time we talked about this a few weeks ago. Um, yeah. Part of their complaint was not, you copied our, our game, uh, but we worked together on PUBG. We got your support for the engine for our game, and it's really uncool for you to use that privileged information to get a head start on making your own competing game. And I think there's... I don't know if there's any truth to that. If there is, I think there's yeah. something to be said for that. On the other hand, I, it, to me, it kind of comes down to, I'm sorry, folks, but Epic just made a better game. Yeah, and I don't think you know if if uh, you'll have to you'll have to be okay with being number two. Yeah, and making insane amounts of money instead of really insane amounts of money. Yeah, Poor this me. is one of those things where um, you know, one PUBG is uh, the the developers behind it are very lawsuit thing have uh, prone because they they have sued a couple of other. Um, a couple of other uh, uh, battle royale games, uh, mobile ones, which uh, you know they claim were just copyright infringements. Like they they copied our look and feel and all that stuff. Uh, I don't remember what happened to those ones, but yeah, this one was a little little trickier because yeah, uh, you know PUBG and and Epic had worked together, um, but yeah, it, it's just they they. It it feels like they sued <clears throat> because Fortnite was better, and, and yeah, that, that, that's the that's yeah. the perception. Certainly, yeah, it's definitely the perception. And, I wonder if Tencent uh, kind of stepped it because they own part of both companies. Then, like, hey, hey, kids, stop fighting, You're making us look bad. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, that that but was something that, that I saw. <laughs> But yeah, the the fact that uh, you know Tencent is a uh, is a uh, a shareholder in both companies probably didn't help PUBG's chances any either. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. I uh, according to Matthew in the chat, uh, PUBG got no special support that other devs uh, didn't. They were trying to pull a Silicon Knights for a bit. <laughs> Ooh, there, yeah. there, there's a deep cut right there. Uh, I think you're talking about a uh, too human. Um, but uh, we've got some other <laughs> stories to get to, so let us move on. Yeah. Um, right. This is kind of funny. Now, we all know that uh, Sony has a pooch, and it did unspeakable <laughs> things to that pooch. A pooch <laughs> named Cross-Platform Play, which is an <laughs> odd name for a pooch. But yeah. still, um, not only does Cross-Platform Play... So, uh, Fortnite is now on all the major consoles, right? Yeah, uh, and PC and, and mobile, and, PC and, and mobile, and your toaster, and and, the, and probably Alexa soon to to, to be with a uh, Skyrim. Yeah. Um, 
It's a cross-platform game, which means that people on PC can play games with people on the Switch and people on the Xbox One. Yeah. But you can't play with people on the PS4 because Sony won't let you. Not only that, but you can't even access your Fortnite account on the PS4. So if you started on the PC or somewhere else and you had an account not with Nintendo or with Microsoft, but with Epic... And you try to sign into your account to get your highly leveled character. You can't. You have to start from scratch. Yeah. Well, uh, that, that's not exactly what it is. It's uh, you know, if you create a PC account, you can take that PC account to the PS4 and start playing it on the PS4. But the problem is, you at that point you can no longer take it to the Switch or the Xbox One because it, your account now has the P, the the PS4 taint on it that uh, Sony doesn't want sharing with anybody else. But if you take your, but it, but if you start on the Switch, you can go to the PC, you can go to the Xbox One, but you can't go to the PS4. And and that's what's ticking a lot of people off is they are, mostly it's because uh, they started on the PS4 and then they wanted to play on their Switch too. But uh, they found out that you know the 200 hours of playtime they spent and the you know hundreds of dollars of money they spent uh, on, through the PS4 um, is kind of stuck there and they have to start a brand new account on uh, every other platform they want to use except for the PC. Here's, here's what I don't understand. Maybe I'm just looking at this the wrong way, but I don't understand the resistance to cross-platform play because yeah. why... Why not let people play with people who own it on other consoles? Yeah. Because if I'm playing it on the PS4, I bought it for the PS4, and I bought the PS4 I'm playing it on, so I gave you my money. Who cares who I'm playing it with? Yeah. I I don't get that. Yeah. and uh, And it's... Yeah, and it doesn't really matter. And it's already been proven in the past that cross-platform play is possible because Rocket League accidentally left it on. I even think Fortnite left it on uh, there at the beginning, and and uh, and then it was quickly shut off uh, because Sony said, "Hey, stop that." Um, but yeah, it, it's just it. There, there's nothing in the technology available that's preventing this from happening. It's just Sony being a butt and saying we don't want you to we, we we are we're the big cheese we don't want to play nice with these other companies so we don't want you to make it possible to play nice with these other companies which is pretty rich coming from sony who just a few years ago smugly said on e3 oh would you like to borrow my game here you go you know when they did that thing at e3 making fun of microsoft and they're like oh yeah Here's how you share a game on PS4. Here you go. <laughs> you know, and they did that whole thing, and now they're like, "No, you cannot play with other people." Yeah. And and now and now Microsoft and Nintendo are playing the smug, "Ha ha, we're we're better than you." Act because just recently they put out some kind, you know, some kind of video ad about cross-platform play, and it's just a. Uh, you know, one half is Xbox, one half is Switch. It says survive together, and uh, there's a whole video about it, and it's it's hilarious. It's just Microsoft and Nintendo um, just bragging about how their customers can play Fortnite together, and uh, and and so yeah, they're they're turning the tides on uh, uh, turning the tide on on Sony here, and it's great. It's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I I admit to a bit of Schadenfreude too, and they. They've also uh, Nintendo of America tweeted out, "Hey, at Xbox, since we can, since we can play together in Minecraft now, did you want to build something?" <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't tag Sony in there. Yeah, <laughs> but Sony, for its part, has said, <clears throat> "We hear you." We're looking at a lot of possibilities. You can imagine that the circumstances around 
that affect a lot more than just one game. I'm confident we'll get to a solution which will be understood and accepted by our gaming community. You don't understand how hard this is for us. While at the same time supporting our business. Sony, just stop doing it. Yeah, exactly. You're the one who's doing it. Stop it. <laughs> there, there is nothing to... There, there, there's nothing to look into. It's just, it's just a matter of saying, "We're sorry, we've turned off our our stupid switch," and uh, and 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 it's and it's not a it's not a, a it's not a stupid it's not a stupid switch. It's a stupid switch, right. and uh, and switch it's just like the stupid deactivate yeah, exactly. <laughs> And uh, and and it's like, yeah, all you have to do is turn that off, and everything will be great. People will be happy. I, I love the I, I love the insinuation that you don't understand how hard this is for us. Almost like it was something that um, happened by accident or divine intervention. It's like yeah. we came into work one day and suddenly platform across platform play didn't work. And we and we have to work so hard to turn it up and it's hard guys and it's expensive. <laughs> it's like no, you work to turn that on. Turn it off. And here's the other <laughs> thing about the you don't understand. We don't care. Yeah. <laughs> we don't care how hard it is for you. <laughs> All we care is we want to play our games with our friends. <laughs> and yep. you're in the way. The only thing you're going to accomplish, Sony, is convince people to buy Fortnite on other platforms. That is yep. the only thing you will accomplish with that. And a lot of other bad press and people calling you doo-doo heads. You doo-doo yep. heads. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Sony. Sony. You know, it, it's... It, I, I've I've been saying this for a long, long time because I'm old. Uh, but it's not beauty which kills the beast or fall off the Empire State Building. It is hubris. <laughs> it's always hubris. <laughs> and, hubris and bites thinking... these companies in the ass every single time, and they never ever learn. I know. You you would think you know after the debacle that was the launch of the the PS3. They would have learned a little humility, um, but you know, and, and but no, you know, they 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 learn to you know to be nice to their customers for a while, and then and then cross platform uh, came, or cross platform play came along, mm -hmm. but you know Microsoft was on top of the world after the 360, and they're like. We've got this uh, connect. Everybody's going to want to connect, even though nobody wanted the old connect. They're going to want the new connect, and we're going to tack an extra hundred bucks onto the price of the console, and everybody's going to love it. And it and has to be to, always on in every yeah, has to to your console, on. and we're yeah. always watching and listening to you, and it's five hundred dollars. <laughs> It's like, and, but it goes back before <laughs> that, so you know, so that's Sony and Microsoft getting too big for their britches. But before oh, that, you had Nintendo with the who were riding high off the Nintendo, the Super Nintendo, and they got into the N64 and they said, We can do whatever we want. Proprietary cartridge medium, boom, dream team of, uh, of developers that uh, we curate ourselves, boom. And Sony was like. <clears throat> PS2, <laughs> you know, has a DVD <laughs> player. Um, well, even the PS1. Well, the PS1 just, uh, actually ate the uh, N64's lunch in a lot of respects, yeah. and then they went with the uh, PS2, and <laughs> Nintendo said, proprietary small disc that holds less information, it's like, <laughs> and costs developers more. It's like, no. And yeah. before that was Atari. Who well, damn near and, killed video games? Yeah, and Sega. It's like with the Sega Saturn. It's like we've got this really awesome system, and it's available tomorrow at this one retailer. And there's no, and there's no games available for it because we didn't tell any of our developers that the system was launching tomorrow. 
and I feel bad about that because Sega genuinely redeemed themselves with the Dreamcast. I personally feel. Oh but yeah, the Dreamcast was too late. Yeah, it was too late. The Dreamcast was a great system, but yeah, I'm glad that, Sega didn't go under because they 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 still make some of my favorites. Oh yeah, they, they they still make some very good games, but yeah, they're they're they, yeah they killed themselves hardware wise. Yeah. So hubris. Y'all got to learn this at some point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what Math- Matthew's getting at. It's like, yeah, Atari killed, nearly killed consoles and video games. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, P- I think PC would have survived, but uh, uh, let's see. At that it, at that age, I mean, there, there was uh, there, yeah, PC gaming was a thing. I mean, yeah, that did, was the the Commodore, the, the yeah, uh, but we definitely had the Sierra uh, stuff. So yeah, um, boy, had had uh, Nintendo not pretty much uh, revitalized uh, home console gaming, I wonder how how different the video game landscape would be today if uh, uh, PC was just the torchbearer from you know late eighties on. Um, I don't know. Might might be really different. Might have, yeah. We might have had a uh, hey um, alternate history buffs. Get on that. <laughs> you know, instead, you know, arcades and, would have been the big thing, and arcade technology would have advanced well beyond its uh, limitations of the time. Still be a thing. Oh man. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. The the thing with arcades, and and this is what I've read. Buffs. Yeah, and I, I've read this uh, in, from multiple sources. The thing that really killed American arcades was the fact that the U.S. would not reliably mint coins larger than a quarter. <laughs> yeah, it, the, yeah. Well, bec- the, the reason I stopped going to arcades is because it costs you know eight quarters to play one of the damn things. Yeah. I'm like, no, uh, you know, kids pants are sagging low enough as it is you load them up with quarters and they're just going to be around their ankles <laughs> yeah. man we're just going to fall over yeah so. but had the had the u.s uh, reliably minted uh 50 cent and dollar coins uh, throughout the the late 80s and 90s arcades would have lasted a lot longer than they did uh, they would have lasted yeah. into the era that we are today where we've got the the swipe reloadable swipe cards mm-hmm. on all the arcade machines uh, so yeah. yeah, and those reloadable swipe cards, those things are, uh, yeah, th- those will eat your money faster than quarters will because it's like, yeah, you, you know, you swipe a card and you aren't you aren't keeping track of uh, how much money you're spending as easily. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's 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 just not it's not the same, you know. Yeah. Uh, calling next game by putting your swipe card up on the screen. First of all, it's too big and it blocks part of the screen. You know, when you put your cord up on the screen, I got next game. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's not really a thing anymore. Yeah. Um, oh, well. Uh, so we've got one more story. And uh, a game that I have never heard of called Omega Labyrinth Z. Uh, you don't get to play uh, yeah. unless you live in Japan because uh, it's, a, it's a roguelike is all I know about it. And it's anime visual character design. You know, the stereotypical anime girl visuals um uh p cube is the publisher and they announced um we are not going to release it in germany or australia or new zealand or ireland or europe or north america uh so sorry about that uh their statement is really vague uh it says we've worked with all relevant age rating bodies in their respective territories and we must respectfully comply with the wishes of the platform holder and have therefore withdrawn any future plans for its european and north american release on the ps4 and ps vita uh a week or two ago it had already uh said yeah it's not coming to uh germany australia new zealand and ireland uh, so apparently there's a concern that the characters in the video game are very young looking as anime girls. Tend yeah. To be, and that there's very salacious elements. And so it's the whole sexualization of children kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, this is the, this is the statement from VCS, uh, 
uh, the Video Standards Council in the in the United Kingdom. It says mm-hmm. there is a serious danger that impressionable people, i.e., children and young people viewing the game, would conclude that the sexual activity represented normal sexual behavior. There is a constant theme of sexual innuendo and activity throughout the game that suggests behavior likely to normalize sexual activity towards children as a means of reward gained by successfully navigating the game. The player has the means to sexually stimulate the female characters. By by using either a handheld remote device or touch screen software. Now, I respect <clears throat> that. That is an interesting concern. Now, I know zero about this game. I haven't seen it, so I'm not, I, I don't know how much I agree with that as it applies to, uh, to, to this particular game. But that, in and of itself, whether true or not, is a legitimate concern. And I respect that. <clears throat> I'm not clear on, although Matthew says, or I'm sorry, Chaos says Sony blocked the release in North America. Um, <clears throat> which if, is likely because it wasn't going to get anything but an AO rating if uh, uh, sent yeah, it to SRB. The, uh, the, uh, the statement from PCube uh, references both the rating system and the platform holder. Yeah. Which, which is odd. So I'm, I'm not sure if that means the game got an AO and the platform holder doesn't allow AO games, yeah. or if the, some of the ratings board said, we won't rate this period, uh, which yeah. the ESRB, I've never heard of them actually doing yeah, that. Yeah, the ESRB d- has never refused classification. The UK uh, ratings body did. Um, I, I don't know about any, like, Germany or Australia, but I know the UK one refused classification. So, which if if the United Kingdom did, then uh, then yeah, it's probably the same thing in Germany and Australia, where their ratings boards are a lot more strict well, than even the United Kingdom's is. Okay, well, the, uh, thank you, uh, Chaos. Uh, the ASRB huh. rated it mature. Uh, it's okay. Uh, both the PS4 and PS Vita version are rated. Uh, let's let's read the rating summary. <clears throat> content descriptors: fantasy, violence, partial nudity, nudity, and sexual content. This is uh, this is role playing game. You missed an A there, folks. Uh, <laughs> this is role playing game in which players help an adventurer on a quest to increase her chest size. Damn it, now I want to play this game. <laughs> that is such a stupid premise. I kind of want to play this now. <laughs> I didn't even read this. So, yeah, that's. Uh... <laughs> you, should, you should write the copy for the back of the box. I would have bought that site. <laughs> I don't see it. So, okay, now I've got to see what this is. That's great. Okay, so uh, she's on a quest to increase her chest size. As players explore labyrinthian dungeons, they use swords to kill enemy creatures, ghouls, goblins, and monkeys in melee-style combat. Characters are depicted slashing enemies to drain their life meter. The game contains sexual material and partial nudity. One interactive minigame requires players to tap heart icons located on female characters' body parts breasts, buttocks, and thighs. Uh, During these sequences, characters make sexual moaning sounds and are depicted in revealing outfits, deep cleavage, partially exposed buttocks, uh, provocative poses, legs spread, buttocks protruding uh, near the screen, characters restrained, and suggestive suggestive situations. Example, a nude woman covered in dessert items and frosting. (laughs) Sorry. That's not funny at all. Uh, Successful completion of the minigame results in characters losing most of their clothing, revealing partially nude bodies obscured by objects, effects, light, water splashes, rose petals. Oh, okay. The the typical anime censorship thing. Uh, In another minigame, players are required to fondle a woman's chest to stimulate the growth of a crystal rod found between her breasts. Uh, oh, some gallery images also depict female characters bathing nude, though their breasts and groin area are obscured by steam. Um. So, okay, well, since it's rated M, I, I guess uh, Sony just said, no, we don't want to release this game in America. I got to... Pr- now, I, I personally take umbrage with that because I'm like, oh, 
it's okay for Japanese audiences, but not for me. Nobody tells me no. I will go on a quest to increase my chest size. That's why I spend so much time in the gym. I, I, yeah. I, my chest circumference is the envy of lots of women. Not cup size so much, but definitely circumference. 46 ladies beat that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, 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 sure, 46 nil, but mm -hmm. okay, that, that joke is terrible. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of odd. This honestly doesn't strike me as a porn game. This strikes me as basically a, a typical Senra and Agra level anime cheese. game. Yeah. Anime crap. I mean, I've. There's a lot of games that's, I mean, and especially the whole, uh, I mean, what's that Doki Doki Maho, so, th that witch game, there's like three of them where you, you know, it's on the DS or something where you rub the characters to find their witch mark or whatever, and they make all moany sounds where you, when you hit their sweet spot or whatever, it's like, uh, did did we suddenly become uncomfortable with ty these types of games? I don't know. I, I would really be interested to hear a statement from Sony on yeah. why they think this game is inappropriate for the rest of the world. It's yeah. like, do you think we're all lame, or do you just not care about Japan? You're like, ah, oh, whatever, Japanese audience. We don't care how yeah. it will affect them. Uh, I, I, I'm wondering... Yeah, I'm wondering how much of it is the uh, the fact that it was refused classification in so many territories that Sony was just like, well, there's no point in making localizing it for Western audiences because it's not going to make enough money to make it worth it. And, uh, you know, whereas, you know, Japan, they can localize, you know, they can release it there and make enough money off of. Off yeah, of just but, Japan to make Japan worth it, but sure, worldwide, you was not. gonna publish it, not Sony. So what yeah. do they care? Eh, that's true, but Sony still has to print all the discs and and distribute and all that stuff. So uh, I guess yeah. but again, the publisher should pay for that stuff. I mean, maybe they don't want to spend the the time giving them the materials they need to make the game. I don't know. Uh, I I guess they could always just add an English language track if they were going to localize it anyway, and then we can all just import the damn thing. Yeah. I really want to play it. Like Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball 3! Hey, I mean, I, I understand. Here, here's the thing. I totally... I personally have no problem with any platform holder not wanting to sell a particular product. Any store that doesn't want to carry a particular product, that's their choice. Any yeah. platform holder, Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, does not want to carry a specific game, that's their choice. A specific rating, eh, I don't agree with that. I think it should be a case-by-case -case basis, but, eh, you yeah. know, again, your choice. What I have a problem with is you know, government stepping in and saying, which doesn't seem to be the case in North America. Yeah. Uh, it just seems to be Sony's like, nah, we don't, we don't want this game on our platform in North America, which is, uh, which is odd to me. I'd be like, why? I mean, if it's okay with Japan, it seems you're comfortable with this game. So yeah, I, mm, I don't know. I, I guess it's one of those. Th it, it might be we're afraid of people reacting poorly to it and calling us mean names on Twitter. Which is possible. Which <laughs> yeah, I don't buy at all because, uh, yeah. you know, EA, Activision, they, they all do incredibly terrible things with their games and we harangue them till the cows come home and they keep doing terrible things. So obviously us yelling at them and calling them bad names like doo doo head doesn't phase them much. Yeah. So I, I don't buy that as oh, if if we released a game with sexual content and people uh were like, Hey, you released a game of sexual boom, mm, we'd feel really bad. It's like, really? Because you know, uh, predatory practices with loot boxes we've been calling you out on for a long time and it doesn't seem to phase you much. Yeah. So, you know, the whole thing with, uh, you know, develop crunch time and workers not being paid and uh, being 
separated from their families because they got to work 18 hour shifts and they sleep under their desk and they lose 80 pounds or whatever because they're always at work eating pizza or whatever and you, you know all that stuff is in the news and that uh, doesn't seem to phase them so i find it really odd that they're like oh well we, we, we someone would call us a mean name on twitter yeah again it's their call if they if they don't want the game on their platform in this country hey that's their call I'm just curious of what the rationale behind it is. Yeah, no idea. It's and as far as uh, this game would contribute to uh, unhealthy views about sex and relationships and attitude towards women and young girls, I think that's a very that's a great perspective and an, an interesting concern, um, and maybe even a valid concern. Yeah. But again, the game is rated M. So don't buy it for your 12-year-old son or whatever, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, the the games don't grow legs and sneak into your house. You know? <laughs> uh, it, so, uh, you know, it, that as a concern, I understand and empathize with. But it, I wonder, one, is it accurate as it pertains to this game? And two, is it really a problem? I, I mean, as, as yeah. far as anyone who would be affected by such a negative message actually ending up with this game. Is that a problem? I, I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, Chaos says P-Cube wouldn't censor it, so Sony said no. People that it may have offended wouldn't have bought it anywhere. Way it was a very niche title. Yeah, yeah, you know. And again, we're talking about a very niche game. That it's not like Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto that's going to end up in fifteen million homes. This was probably going to sell like thirty thousand units tops, maybe <laughs> on a good Drops, day. Yeah. Um, but also, I will say, I completely respect P Cube for saying no. We're not censoring it, and if we can't release it uncut, we ain't releasing it. I like you. That's yeah. good. And I'm sorry I don't get to play the amazing adventures of Susan, who's on a grand quest to increase her chest size, because that sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh, not definitely not a game that I want to play or would no. be interested in playing at all. But, uh, you know, there, if there's people out there that want to play it, they should be able to. But I guess there's always, uh, you know, PC release. Uh, you know, people can play it on PC. Um I, I, you know, I guess, you know, with Steam being having, you know, deciding to just, you know, not, uh, not care about content, you know, they could always release it on Steam and uh, everybody could get it there, uncut, uncensored. Yep. But, and yeah. also, parents, please make sure your children are not learning their attitudes toward women and young girls from video games. <laughs> exactly. Please. Yeah. And and parents, if this isn't the kind of game you want your kids playing, don't buy it for them. <laughs> that, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So. And, uh, you know, if you have young kids, keep, keep an eye on what they're playing. Talk to them about what they're watching on the YouTubes. Because uh -huh. I know that whatever you watch on YouTube is about two degrees of recommendations away from Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, hey, uh, a video on My Little Pony. And you watch my little video, and then two recommendations down, it's like, why feminism is a cancer on the West, and that we should round up people into camps and throw them in the ocean. It's like, holy shit! How did I get here from My Little Pony? What is your algorithm doing, YouTube? My goodness! <laughs> Chaos is that is far too reasonable for most parents. Yep, exactly. Yes, the, the, the Vita is, is not a Hundred and fifty dollar babysitter, or whatever it costs now. Golly, are Vita's even available? Still, I, I don't know. But yeah, yes, kids are annoying. That's why I don't have any. <laughs> they don't like them. You know, I don't like dogs either. I mean, I don't dislike dogs. Kind of like kids. I don't dislike them. I just don't like them. So I don't have any. You know, it's it's not like you wake up one morning use the restroom, you trudge out, start making breakfast, and, oh, suddenly I have a kid or a dog. That doesn't, it doesn't work that way. So, 
<clears throat> oh, well. Oh, well. There well, is a game, though, that I, I can't remember what it is. It's one of the Atelier games or something. I, I forget what it's called, but I, I don't let, know. let me look it up real quick because it's uh, Nel Nelki and the Legendary Alchemists Atelier of a New Land. I have no idea what the hell this game is. It's it's like the thirtieth game in the Alatlier series, whatever that's pronounced. Um, but I, I just see art of it on a lot of the video game blogs, and I'm just kind of really digging it. I just really like the, this. Uh, I, I don't have any to, to share right now, but uh, it's uh, it, it's anime looking. But I, I just really like the art style and the costumes, and yeah. I'm just like I don't know what this game even is, but I kind of want to play it just because I, I like the look of it. Yeah. Um, so I know that okay. that's that's a terrible name. Uh, Nelki and the Legendary Alchemists. Atelier of a New Land. That just rolls right off the tongue there, don't it? Yeah. Um, hmm. uh, Chaos says it's still $200 and not available in the West anymore. If you want a Vita, you have to import one. Well, if you want a Vita, import one and import... What is this <coughs> game called? Uh, Omega, Q, Labyrinth. Omega Labyrinth Q. So, if, if, yeah. that's, if, if that's your deal, I... <laughs> great. <clears throat> so... Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's the show. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I do have you know, one last thing that I want to mention. I'm okay, I'm not going to spend uh, any any real time on this. Sure, but sure. Uh, yesterday, um, Polygon published an article, uh, and the article is titled "A Brief History of Bethesda's Many Legal Tangles," um, and it goes from electronics, uh, from Electronic Arts in, eight, in 1988 to Warner Brothers this year, and it's written by one Colin Campbell. And uh, the article is, uh, you know, just uh, you know, a brief rundown of of some of the the major um, you know lawsuits that Bethesda has been involved in over the years, and uh, it's a very interesting read. But uh, I had one issue with this, and it's actually, I guess, it's technically two issues, but it's really the same thing. Um, when it talks about uh, when Bethesda um, sued Mojang. Uh, over their game Scrolls, mm -hmm. uh, this is what Colin wrote. He says, uh, riding high on its mega hit Minecraft, Swedish company Mojang decided to launch a digital card game, which it called Scrolls. Bethesda objected, claiming this perfectly ordinary word was a breach of its copyright of the Elder Scrolls. Okay, yeah, I, re I remember making fun oh. of that back in the day. Uh, well, hopefully you can you can get where I'm I'm coming from here. But uh, later on in this, uh, it goes to uh, No Matter Studios and their game Pray for the Gods, and um, and this mm -hmm. is what he wrote. Um, developer No Matter Studios changed its game's name, which is commonly compared to Shadow of Colossus. Yada yada yada. Uh, it says Bethesda argued the name was merely or uh, uh, Bethesda argued it was merely protecting its copyrights. This is twice in this one article where Colin Campbell used copyright when what was what he should have used was trademark. Wrong word. The, the entirely wrong legal concept here. Okay, and um, and so uh, I I um, got a little uppity in this, and uh, so I posted a comment on on the article, and I, this is what I wrote. And I, I I took sections of both of those and and high, and bolded the word copyright in it. I said trademark, 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 trademark. The claim was the name was a violation of Bethesda's trademark. Trademark and copyrights are not interchangeable. And um, and I also, you know, I I posted those comments. I waited a few hours. Nothing happened. No changes. So I went and I, I submitted a uh, um, like a, an editor tip or whatever mm -hmm. on their contact form, and I said um, you used trademark or you used copyright when you should have been using trademark, and this is you know the these are not the same thing, and it confuses people. 
nothing happened. I went on Twitter. I tweeted both Polygon and Colin Campbell and, and said, hey, you got this wrong. Can you fix this? And uh, but no, nothing happened. And then later on uh, uh, this morning or yesterday evening, uh, somebody posted a comment on there where they started talking about how you've got to protect your copyrights or you're going to lose them. And this guy is even... Uh. <laughs> Patent and copyrights and the same thing and, and he's like you're gonna risk losing your patents and and uh i'm just like uh three I, different I, things i i i i i listed i took some quotes out of this guy's uh comments and i said see colin campbell this is what i'm talking about when i corrected you above you're incorrectly equating copyright and trademark and you and your edi editors refusal to fix the error you are contributing to the ignorance of the masses <laughs> and this bugs the crap out of me because a lot of it, this isn't the first time this uh, this has happened especially you know it's an easy mistake to make but and, yeah please and it. It, it's happened on kotaku and a few other uh, game sites that i read and and it just it it really bugs the crap out of me because these guys, these editors should know the difference. They mm -hmm. should catch these mistakes before publishing. And, and if somebody sends you a message saying, Hey, this needs to be fixed. It might be worth a look and maybe a, uh, uh, you know, delete the, the bat, you know, the incorrect information and put in the new stuff. But yeah. <laughs> and have uh, they still not fixed it? No, that still hasn't been fixed. They, they, they uh, this article yesterday morning, and uh, it still hasn't been fixed as of today. Time to dox them. No. Yeah, <laughs> you will be swatted, sir. Yeah, yeah. and so uh, that yeah. is a shame because yeah. you know even editors can be can get the wrong words, but uh, when the editors and writers and stuff and the reporters are confused, imagine how confused the readers are now. Yeah, exactly, and uh, you know, and you know, like I said, you know, the uh, the article itself is is a pretty uh, you know pretty good article. You know, just you know, basic information about what Bethesda has been up to, legally speaking, over the years. But yeah, I just I, I really cannot stand it when people use copyright instead of trademark uh, when they're talking about trademark issues. Yeah, who was the numbnuts who was suing Mirror's Edge over Edge? Um. Oh goodness. Lang Lang's. What What is his name? Um. Mark. Oh, let's see here. Um. Langdell. Lang um, Langdell. Yeah. Tim Langdell. Yeah. Tim he, Langdell. he claims to have the sole trademark rights to the word edge, and and uh, basically, yeah, he's uh, <laughs> going he, after uh, Aerosmith next for living on the edge. Yeah, but uh, yeah, he went after EA and and a few other mm -hmm. uh, places over that trademark, and uh, yeah, pretty much uh, just uh, got his butt handed to him uh, after yeah. a while. But he isn't do you know he wasn't doing anything with it. He hadn't done anything in over a decade, and and uh, you know trying to claim that uh, it's still a valuable trademark, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, well. That is our show for the evening. So uh, we shall plug our things and get it. Well, that sounded vaguely dirty. And get out <laughs> of here. So Andrew Eisen here, E I S E N is the last name and how it's spelled. Uh, plug it into YouTube. You'll find my YouTube videos, uh, which unfortunately in the last year has been predominantly unscripted things like debut review and podcasts and let's play kind of stuff and i apologize for that i do like doing scripted videos but um last year as y'all know uh my rent went up 100 bucks a month which sucks uh yeah. so i've had to um in spend a bit more time on freelance stuff and just recently i lost the ability to do overtime um what Ooh. happens was is uh, i'm qa and the helpline is a different department, a different cost center. So it's billed differently, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was on the uh, off hours rotation. You, you would sometimes see me on the phone and I had to walk away from the podcast occasionally because I was on the phone. Uh, yeah. So I was on call just to, you know, Andrew, could, to help out other departments. Well, yeah, kind of, but also extra money. Um, 
they don't want to pay me. The other department that I don't technically work for uh, doesn't want to pay my overtime, which I, I found kind of odd because if I'm not on call, someone else is, and you're paying their overtime. So either way, you're paying someone's overtime. Why not me? Uh, but they don't want to. So now I have to spend more time on freelance work, which I make more money freelance than I do even the overtime, but freelance takes longer because, well, one, it just takes longer. You know, I'm on call and I'm done by the next morning, right? Uh, freelance is something a lot of time, depending on what you're doing, can take several days, several weeks, depending. Uh, also, it's something that you have to go out and find, you know? Uh, so that takes time, too. So yeah. that's uh, that's why you haven't seen a lot of scripted stuff for me lately, because I don't have a ton of time to do it. And when I do get free time, I'm just tired and I don't want to work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but hopefully you enjoy my debut reviews and some of the, some of the uh, unscripted stuff that I can turn around a lot faster than fully produced scripted videos. Uh, wish I could do more, but uh, eh, is what it is. Yeah. Uh, also, follow me on Twitter at Andrew Eisen because I say goofy, silly things there. And I just broke part of my uh, thing. Oh well. Uh, Zachary, plug away. All right, you can follow me on Twitter at Easy Night, where I talk about gaming and politics and stuff. Uh, I don't tweet as much now as I used to because work has decided to uh, interfere with Twitter's uh, uh, usability, and uh, and so all I have is my phone. Um, but uh, you know, I but I have tweeted quite a bit this week because Oklahoma had its. Uh, uh, first primary elections of the year, and uh, there was a lot of interesting stuff uh, happening. Uh, medical marijuana is now legal in Oklahoma, so you know Oot. that. Um, uh, but also, if you're interested in my game development work, you can check out uh, DK underscore gaming on Twitter and DivineNightGaming.com, where I plan on doing more stuff over the next few weeks. And uh, also, if you're interested in the Oklahoma game development scene, you can check out OK Game Devs on Twitter and OKGameDev.com. Hmm. Well, before we go, I just want to uh, share my opinion on marijuana, whether it's medicinal or recreational. <clears throat> Ready for this hot take? All marijuana right. smells awful. <laughs> That's really my only opinion on marijuana. I really, I just, oh, uh, yeah, uh, so bad. I, I have a friend who's, who, she's like, doesn't it smell wonder? I'm like, no, <laughs> no. Do your olfactories not work at all? No, it's <laughs> terrible. It's it, the first time I smelled marijuana. I probably told this story before, but the first time I, I smelled it, I thought someone had accidentally lit the carpet on fire. I'm not kidding, because it, it's got that burnt synthetic smell, and oh, man. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So, have a lovely week, y'all. We we'll hope to see you back next week for another rip-roaring episode of Mole Hill Mountain. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. See ya.